Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Today we're going to look at how to upload files into Microsoft Flow through an HTTP request response process and then how you can use these files in the Flow or rather the, the Power Platform um, how you can write these things into OneDrive, SharePoint, send an email from them or with it um, or then also writing it into SQL um, and then storing that as a binary data type in SQL so originally we started playing with Power Apps and how to write attachments into SQL from Power Apps and uh, basically out of the box Power Apps play, plays very nicely with image data types on SQL unfortunately that's uh, image data types on SQL have been deprecated so you actually should be using binary data types and out of the box Power Apps don't enjoy binary data types as much. There are some workarounds for that we'll, which we'll cover in another session uh, but today we're going to quickly look at flow so um, hope you enjoy this video and uh, yeah let's jump into it. Right so first things first we're going to create the flow and uh, to do that click on new flow create from blank and now search from hundreds of connectors. Now on here we can go and search for HTTP at the bottom you'll see that there's an HTTP request and that means that this flow will trigger as soon as this HTTP request is uh, is hit or is received um, on this URL which will generate as soon as I save this flow. So just be aware there are some licensing changes from Microsoft side uh, that affects these custom HTTP connectors or uh, connect connections in flow or actions in flow so just be aware of those, uh, maybe go and do a bit of reading on that so that you know what, what all of that says. But in um, short, we've got this trigger ready and from here we can now go and say I want to do something immediately after that. So from here I'm just going to go and select Outlook, I'm going to say send an email, send it to myself and school it test attachment and body is test from HTTP right we're going to show advanced options we have the opportunity to specify attachment details so I know I'm going to be sending this a, a JPEG I believe or a PNG can't remember actually <laughs> let's go and check so it's a PNG file. All right, so let's actually just hard code this file name for now. No, it's not ideal. Uh, we can discuss how to find that file name in the in the uh, attachment as well that you passed to it. But for now, let's just say it's going to be test PNG, and the content we now need to write a small expression to get a handle on the the attachment that's going to be transported in the HTTP request. So first, I'm going to do it wrong but I need you to understand why it is wrong and why it's not working after you do this so first of all we're going to do a trigger multi-part body um, and this basically is a an expression that tells flow that to go and look at the HTTP request that it gets and to find the attachments in it all right and to find or not necessarily attachments but to find various pieces or components in it so we're going to tell it uh, zero so get the first one and then we're going to want to go and have a look and connect or fetch the content object in the multi-part body right so if flow likes that it doesn't have an issue with that so let's go and save this and now you'll see that it's going to give me a URL over here and I can I connect to that URL and post information to it um, if you're not aware of, of a tool called Postman, I'd really recommend that you go and download it and install it. It really is handy. It allows you to test API connections um, and uh, it really is a, is a useful tool. So if we go and change, it's not a GET request because we're not going to be downloading anything. We're going to actually be posting something to this URL. So let's go and post that in there. Or paste that in there. Uh, you don't need to specify any headers at this stage, you could, which will be handy for other things in the request where you could be looking for things like API keys and you know verifying who's making the connection and these sort of things. But for now we're going to leave all of that blank and go to body. Make sure that form data is selected and um, also keep in mind if, you, if body is not selectable 
then it means that you haven't changed the request from a get to a post because if you have a get request it's not going to allow you to send anything to the API. Right, so I've selected form data. Now I can go and say that we're not going to be sending text, we're going to be sending a file and it now allows me to choose a file that we're going to be sending. And I've got a PNG here called find x. If I attach that or not attach it, I specify that in Postman and if I now hit send it's going to send this file up with the HTTP request to this flow. So let's just go and make sure flow is saved. It is saved because otherwise it wouldn't have given me that URL. But just save it again and make sure that everything is happy. It still gives me that warning. Fine, we'll proceed without it. And let's go and send this request. All right, so it takes a minute to upload. We haven't um, specified a response yet. So we're not receiving any th any confirmation back. We're just getting a 202 status, which means that it accepted whatever we passed to it. And if we now open up that flow, we'll see that it succeeded. It got something, and here's some details about it, what it is. And this is the multi-part section we spoke about earlier on and here is we're getting connecting to the content so there's the actual content that is uh, that we passed to to this api so if we're going to send mail you'll see that it generated an email but if i open up my mailbox at this stage i'll see that file but i won't be able to open it and i'll show you why when i click on that um, it shows me the file name it shows me everything but it doesn't understand what it got. So in other words, the content of this file is not in a format that my mail client expected. So let me go and show you why that is and how to fix that. So let's go and edit this flow. And this stage, we're going to go into that same trigger multi-part body uh, formula or uh, expression that we wrote earlier. I'm just going to copy that and I'm going to tell flow to convert from base64 to binary. I'm going to give it two brackets and I'm going to paste the trigger multipart body uh, expression inside of those brackets to tell flow to take that attachment and then convert it from base64 encoding to a binary format. So the moment I do that, updated, you'll see that that changed now and it's looking good. It's not giving me any errors at this stage. I'm saving it and it's not giving me any er errors either so that's that's looking looks like we uh looks like we're good. So I'm going to go into flow, oh sorry, postman. And I'm just going to hit send again. I'm going to go back into my email. First of all, let's see flow ran. Flow ran. No errors, nice and fast, everything is smooth. And if I now go into it, you'll see that immediately in the preview, it's actually able to render the content of this. And if I now open this, this file is perfect. And it also doesn't matter what I sent it. If this was an, a JPEG, it would have worked. If it was a PDF, it would have worked. It really doesn't matter. If it's in binary format, um, it basically is executable, if, if that makes sense. All right, so all of that works well. If I go back into flow, though, here's a bit of a, a caveat to take notice of. If I open up flow again and I edit that flow and I go to that same formula that I wrote earlier you'll see that if I hover over this or select it it removed the formula to do the base64 to binary conversion. Alright so it actually it removed it in the front end but if you download the JSON spec for this or the, the logic apps spec you'll see that it is still being executed. It's still in the back end. I don't know if this is a bug. Um, we picked it up during the testing. It's really confusing. But the good thing is that the, f the, the formula the, the, or the expression that we put in there is still there and it is still working, um, even though you can't see it on the front end. So we can now build on onto this flow and then uh, actually add different components to it. And that's what we're planning to do in subsequent videos. So I um, hope you enjoyed the video and uh, please let us know if you have any questions or suggestions and uh, please join us for the next one.
Thank you very much. Cheers. Bye-bye.